So I love Ellen. I think Ellen is incredible. Um, I like to see her dance and all that stuff. And I love me a good lesbian anyway. Ellen just gives me life. All right. And undeniably, she is a trailblazer for the LGBT community, period. But nobody anointed her to speak on behalf of the entire community. You know, I believe maybe she can have this uh, discussion with Kevin Hart and the things that he said and whether or not he should or should not host the Oscars and things like that, maybe from a white lesbian perspective. But the people who his comments were directly aimed at, people like me, people like little black gay boys, you know, who are over at the house playing with Barbie dolls and Barbie dream houses and easy bake ovens like I used to and like I still do sometimes, but don't judge me. <laughs> it affected us. And we're the people who should have been invited to this conversation. So I think it was very insensitive. I don't just think I know. And I mean, I think it was a nice gesture, you know, for Ellen to invite him on. And it, it, it was almost like they were like, well, you got to go sit down with somebody gay. Go to Ellen. She's the gay savior. And it's almost like she didn't even want to do the damn thing. She was just like, it didn't affect me. I forgive you. You should host the Oscars. And I get it. It's her friend. But I think the whole thing was insensitive. Let's talk about why. I think it was insensitive and they really are missing a lot of important moments with this. If you really want to make it a teachable moment, we're going to get to that later. If you really want to make it a teachable moment, you would invite people who are affected by this sort of situation to sit down and have not national dialogue on these shows. But as far as I know, he's only done Ellen. I know Don Lemon invited him on CNN. He has yet to even sit down with Don Lemon, who's also a black gay man. But it's important for Kevin Hart to sit down and not just have a conversation, but be confronted with some very tough questions about the things that he says and how it affects us. Because the black community is not more homophobic than any other community. It's not. I think our shit is more sensationalized because, you know, black people, everything we do is sensationalized because we do it better. <laughs> but I think that, uh, you know, we are affected by it in a way that, of course, little gay white boys are, are beaten up and thrown out by their parents and, and all that sort of stuff. But with gay, young gay boys, we are beat you know, we are made to drink beer. Some of us have had dads or stepdads who've driven us, you know, over to where, you know, the sex workers are, prostitutes or whatever, or whatever they're called, and who tried to make us have sex with women to kind of cure us of our sexuality. I know growing up, you know, they used to say, oh, he's a little bit light in the Reebok or whatever they used to say about me. And my stepdad used to punch me in the chest and make me drink beer and play these games on the Sega Genesis that I didn't want to play. You know, if you look at even, you know, shows that have been able to break into kind of like the mainstream sphere, like Empire, you know, Lee Daniels had this scene, I believe in season one where Lucius went and threw baby Jamal in the trash can for being gay. And that's our reality. And that's one reason why, you know, jokes like that aren't funny and we are affected in a much different way by it, which is why we should be included. Secondly, you know, I, I am constantly engaging in the dialogue with black men who go, well, I don't see what the problem is. And some people try to defend him, but uh, it, the thing is a lot of people, they, they, they don't see the harm. You know, they go, well, y'all gay niggas, this and that, and all this type of stuff. And I noticed that a lot of our heterosexual brothers, they kind of downplay the homophobia. They ignore it. Some of them are straight up ignorant, homophobic themselves, you know, and I don't get it because at the end of the day, we're both black first. And I believe that as black people, we have an obligation to each other because it doesn't matter whether I'm gay and you're straight or what we do when we go home to our lovers or whatever. We're affected by the same things as black people first. So 
say I'm sitting in the car with you, I'm driving, you driving, and we get pulled over by the police, and we know what happens when they pull us over, if we're in there together, they're not going to give a damn about who's sleeping with who. They're going to see both of our black asses sitting up in there together, and we know how we get treated. We know how we get treated when applying for work. You know, um, any other disparity. It's so many that come to mind immediately, you know, that we face as black men. And so my thing is, we are affected by everything that we deal with as black men first. And I feel like anything that we do that isn't helping another black person, a black man or a white woman, we are collectively enabling our own genocide, which is what homophobia, especially in the black community is. And another reason why I have a hard time accepting Ellen as much as I love her, kind of giving him her blessing is because of the racism in the gay community. And we don't like to talk about that. There's still some clubs that you go into or you try to go into, especially in places like San Francisco or something like that, even some parts of LA, you know, where there is a predominant white gay culture. And they want you, if you're a black person, to show two or three IDs. Or if you go to a club like I was at just a few weeks ago, you could end up with little shards of glass in your drink, which I thought was, and I tried not to go there with my thinking, but I just find it weird that I wasn't the only black person who's been in this establishment who's had this situation occur. And, you know, if you, if you really want to be honest, about what we deal with and, and the differences because I don't think people understand that. It's like there's a difference between being a white gay person and a, and a black gay person because we experience, our experiences come from our skin colors first. And I don't like to get all into that type of thing, but this is America. This is what the country was founded on. If you black, your ass is gonna have to deal with some shit if you go to the right neighborhood, you know, if you're in corporate America or even if you're in my industry, you know, which is entertainment, you're going to have to deal with it. It is different. The money is different. Your experiences are different. Your access to certain things are different. And so to get back to my original point, looking at the fights that, you know, gay white men have had in the, the, the fight for gay, gay rights, I'm just going to be honest. I've been there. I've been a part of a lot of those fights because I am somebody who I feel like a humanitarian or whatever, but I am a person who believes in liberation, period. So, of course, and I, and I am a gay person. Yeah, I'm black, but I'm gay, and I'm going to be there to be a part of any sort of social justice fight. But I have not wholly benefited from a lot of the things that gay white men have fought for. As a, just as a black gay man, because marriage isn't my priority. You know, marriage is a business transaction. And so if you're getting married, nine times out of 10, okay, yeah, you're going to marry somebody because you love them and all that. But you also come together, you bring your resources together. Marriage is a business. And a lot of black folks, just we don't have the things necessary to get in business, which is why, number one, uh, we see a lot of our like aunties and uncles, they've been together with their, with their man or their woman or whatever, and they've been together for 30 years and they ain't married. They don't see the point in getting married. And that's a lot of black people. And it's another reason why if you look at the divorce rate, the divorce rate is over 50%. I think they say since millennials got a hold to it, it's done, it's done drop some because we know better. You know, it's just like we done figured it out. We, we know it's no point in getting married or whatever. But if you look at the divorce rate, that's why it's, it, it drops because a lot of these businesses, they fail. And so it's as far as like gay marriage and stuff, that hasn't benefited me. You know, and, and ultimately black people not being a part of this dialogue is another example of why I believe black people, and, and, and I talk to a lot of like my white gay friends and they go, well, why don't black people uh, like to have the discussion about gay this and gay that? And they look at it as white. 
This is one of the reasons why. Because here this issue, and this is Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart is one of the biggest stars right now. Right? And this has drug out. It's become a national dialogue. And this isn't the first time that we've, you know, had the, these discussions because we've had them in our churches. We still have them every goddamn Sunday almost. We're still having this issue in churches and things like this. You know, we've had the Eddie Longs and the Donnie McClurkins, but you got Kevin Hart. And now it's here. And the only thing black people who aren't informed and who aren't able to think about it like this can see is these white gay people on his back about some shit that he said. No black people are present. And they, the media is able to reach out to folks who do things. You know, it's, and, and me personally, like, I was one of the first black gay men, out black gay men in stand-up comedy. You could have reached out to folks like me. You could have reached out to folks like Wanda Sykes. You could have reached out to folks like Billy Porter or Jesse Smollett. There are black gay people present in the entertainment in industry. Lee Daniels, who could be present for these conversations, who live the experiences, and who can ask the questions that a lot of us are thinking and that a lot of us are exchanging on social media. But we're not present. Shoot, you could invite some... Where's NBJC? Because the thing is, a lot of people also aren't aware how politically active the LGBT community is and has been forever back even before you know of course James Baldwin and Barrett Rusty you know there was Alfred Duckett and all these other people but we are here and it's sad because we're not present and so anybody who looks at this and really thinks at it critically and we know how some people think and I mean I have my own opinions about this too but a lot of people will look at it and go this isn't even a gay issue this is a white supremacy issue this is white people flexing their muscles. So who gives a fuck about gay people and why do we need to have the conversation? And you miss some serious opportunity for dialogue. And, and do I think some white people are flexing their muscles? Perhaps. But I also believe that us not being at the table really, really misses an opportunity for serious dialogue and, and maybe some healing in our community because I mean I look at it in a lot of ways if you look at maybe some you know young gay boys who are looking at Kevin Hart who love him and they hear this sort of situation I think about how that can impact them because I know how I was impacted by things that I saw on media and in film and, and, and heard on the radio and things like that when I was a little boy you know 12, 13 years old, who knew that I loved a little bit different, that the things that I was attracted to was a little bit different. I know what that did to my self-esteem. So think about how that impacts those young boys. Think about how that does impact people who really aren't able to think critically around issues of sexuality. And if you really, really, really want to do better and have this discussion, there's no reason why we shouldn't have been at the table. But that's my two cents on it. I hate that I went on and on and on and on. Um, if you hung in there and watched this, I appreciate you looking at it. And um, that's all I had to say. I mean, I have a lot more to say, but I'm not going to do like them church pastors do and be like, I'm going to wrap this up. And 30 minutes later, well, I doubt people keep looking. But you know what I'm saying. But those are just, you know, um, some of my thoughts around it. I think it's just important for us to be there and present for the discussion um, because these sorts of things affect us differently as black gay people. And that's all I wanted to say. So, you know, Ellen, any other white gay person who feels like, you know, you have all the answers, you don't. I love y'all. I love everybody. But you don't have all the answers. And everybody needs to be at the table. That's all I got to say. And watch your mouth. Come up with better jokes. That's it. Love y'all. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself.